Thank you for coming today. We'll uh, continue with the last part of our second reading of uh, Mr. Yu Who Met the Kitchen God. Actually, the translation for that Zhao Shen is actually Stove God, all right? Because Kitchen becomes Chu Shen, which is which is like a TV series from Stephen Chow, Zhou Xingzi, Chou Shen. So it's supposed to be Mr. Yu Who Met the Stove God, particularly about the stove, but it, it's the same meaning in, in terms of, you know, the, the 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 significance of stove god to the fam, uh, Chinese household in the ancient times, even today. So now we're back to the point. Uh, before we begin, let's chant ten times Ami To Four, um, and then we'll go straight into the uh, last part of the second reading. Ami To Four. Ami To Four. Ah. Me to Mr. Yu Hu Met the Stove God Chronicles. Today we'll continue with our second reading, last part. Last week we talked about the um, Mr. Yu Hu has encountered his um, error of his ways through uh, Stove God's avatar, Mr. Zhang, or not avatar, manifestation, uh, Mr. Zhang in the form of Mr. Zhang, and he has been awakened from a deep slumber that has um, trapped him for uh, 47 years of his life. So after that, he woke up, he aware of his error, he was shocked. Uh, Mr. Uh, Zhang gave him a prescription. So first, he always says that whenever you have wandering thoughts, like sexual misconduct, the thoughts of lust, the thoughts of greed, the thoughts of... Um, um, being uh, ingenuine, being fake, the thoughts of etc., 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 or the wandering thoughts. We need to pack it up, put it aside, and leave only good thoughts in our mind. So no matter what happens in your life, you know, what happens and how that gives rise to this kind of thoughts, you must allow, it, you must clear the way for only the positive and good thoughts to come up. You cannot allow it to fester. So that's this message. Even though we repeated this, because every time we say that, we ask ourselves, have I done that? Or have I done this recently? And um, to make it like right, same wording, but different experience every time. Um, so this is the same for us as well. So this time when I say it, I admit that I have a lot of wondering thoughts, a lot of um, anger and stuff because of circumstances not going well in my way. So that gives rise to a lot of negativeness in my, uh, in my conduct, especially the way I say it's more, um, let's say, bad mouthing others and stuff like that because of anger, so of insatisfaction. So this kind of thing happens in our daily life, and it can only be felt when you actually go through life. So right now, Mr. Yu has um, put this in words, and if we reflect it on our own circumstance because this is second reading we don't want to just read on the surface we need to use it and now if, if i use this in my own context just as an example you can apply on your own accordingly it's um definitely not passing this mark uh, this one thing thoughts is taking over so it takes one or two days to get rid of it so so this is showing how difficult it is to actually achieve what the prescription or Mr. Zhang's uh, stove god's uh, standard um, to clean up the uh, your mind from all this grudge, greed, lust, resentment, um, etc. Uh, and those things usually caused by inner factor and external factors. Some external factors like when you work, things not going well, or your families or your um, 
relations with other people is not going well, etc., or things just not going well. All right, adversities or inner factors is you know the um, the in the beginningless the the infinite beginning uh, uh infinite lifetime of habits that accumulated. It just breaks out when the condition is met. So back to here, that's Mister um, the Stove God's um, teachings. Clean them all up. Leave only one thought of kindness behind. That's it. Just wanting to help people, wanting to to serve uh, others for their benefit. Uh, no matter how tough it is, or how ugly the thought is, or your conduct getting more reckless. Always go back to this origination. Always go back to this point. I want to help and really serve others. So right now, no matter how frustrated I am, this is what I experience from this word after going through the weeks. No matter how hard uh, or how terrible my conduct right now is, I need to go back to that original intention of me, uh, the, 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 the purer sense, the purer side of me. Uh, don't let it drag you further. Don't fall into that pit of grudge and resentment. Always come back, bounce back. So this is uh, what I understand from this um, readings of uh, Miss uh, Stove God's teaching. Uh, so clean them all up. Only leave one thought behind. That is the kind thoughts, the good thoughts. What is the kind thoughts? What is the good thoughts? Right? They mentioned if you have the ability to do that, uh, do not ask for anything in return. Do not ask for any fame in return. Do not care if it's big or small. Uh, do it earnestly. Uh, do it patiently. Uh, if you can't do it in your power, if it's outside your power to uh, to do it, then you still need to be uh, You still need to find a way to complete these deeds. Um, that's how it is. You know, like you can't control your flow of thoughts, right? You get everything out and it's negative your mouth is swearing and all that and you you're getting frustrated and all that this is how i do it okay and and this is terrible you get dragged and all that but you still need to come back and say what do i need to do now you know how do i complete my role my task my mission um get through the day and then let it sink in let it rest uh, and then do not attach to it do not allow it to stay too long so this is our cultivation uh, we need to learn from uh, the sage uh, because it's easy to get carried away and if we entertain that too much we become uh, the person we do not want to be you know the bitter uh, cynical or overly uh, emotional or overly uh, anger management issues people you know for my case or too greedy and stuff like that um, everyone has that problem the thing everyone struggles. The thing is, how do they come back from it? Um, so this this cases we um, read this. If we use that level of understanding in life or experience in life to read this, then we start to get it. Um, it's a it's a process. Uh, it's it's a goal. So this thing is needed to help us to remind us. You know, at the end of the day, those are just a glimpse of your life. Uh, it will go. Uh, don't don't stay too long. Let's move on. So he has given two prescription. I, uh, we have mentioned this already a few weeks ago during the practice week, during the form uh, the actual youth group week. But this time it gets deeper. It gets better. So same word, patience. <laughs> now I understand how hard it is to be patient. Even more, patience is such a virtue. It's it's hard. It's important. Yet it's so hard to get. You get impatient so easily when you things doesn't go your way, or the in my case the the work the thing is not going in accordance to what it was agreed or the workflow is not well stuff like that. Everyone has their own quirks. My quirk is things not going well. I get impatient and want to push it along. So patience is important. How do you be patient yet get things done right or do the right thing or do your job right duty? Uh, in, not just work in your family, right? Things might not, kids might not listen to you or your husband or your wife might not communicate well with you. You might not understand or they give you the look, stuff like that. How do you be patient, right? Usual case or the case that might happen mostly to everyone, most people is lash out. They might 
give back the face, cold treatment, or just yell, nap, uh, nag, yap, yapping. Those, those are reactions of things not going well, insatisfaction, agitations, anxieties. So those are human experience. Welcome to our world, guys. So now, what is the medicine? Right? Like, yes, all these emotions coming out, it's painful, it's annoying, it's not going anywhere, I'm really pissed, I really don't know what to do. So, what's next? Do we go on and whine and whine and whine and whine and rant and go out and carry out our energy to our friends and then just tell them, again, what happened to my husband, to my wife or to my work? Does it work? Does it help? Yes, we need to talk about our frustration. I'm not saying we should watch it up, that's worst. That's, that's how a lot of, you know, bad things happen. I mean, the extreme case like shootings in the school, maybe, <laughs> that they didn't get support they need. We need to seek support. That's one way to learn to rely on others because we are in a society. You're not alone, right? Just because there's a group of people being mean to you or being uh, unreasonable or in terms of work, they might not go the way that it's supposed to be. Doesn't mean that the whole world is like that. No. Don't be extreme. There's always sight that you can rely on. Find it. Your family, your friends, those friends that are always waiting for you to tell them what happened. There are people who care for you. Go for it. Patience does not build on bottle up. Guys, you can't get patience by bottling up. The only thing it will work, the only thing that will carry, I mean, the only effect of bottling everything up is a terrible explosion of emotions that harms more than constructing. Patience does not be on that. Patience is built on understanding. It's built on knowing the time will show you what's the actual uh, re uh, what's the actual reason behind it. Or knowing that sometimes it just doesn't matter. Well, no matter what the reason, you move on because there are bigger things ahead. That comes to the second part, patience. And then why you patience? Because you have a long-term goal. You want to do something that are actually meaningful to your life in the whole thing. Long term, not just in time. Last week, I just say, oh, long term goal, I want to be Buddha. But what it actually really means to you now is how significant it is. In the direct translation, the first one is to be patient. The, uh, the second one is to be, uh, is to think, is to think uh, long term. Sorry, the camera. Is to think, um, uh, how to say, is to think long Think in long, uh, think think in the in the long term. Yeah, long term. Sorry, guys. Think in long term. Uh, long term as in time, as in significance to you, right? Um, and also, while we say that we need to benefit others, less thinking about ourselves, it's important to understand if we start cultivating, we might think that we think about others, but we can't. We still have a tendency to use our perspective on others. So our first job is to sort out what's inside first. Then we can work towards the goal of really thinking about others. If we don't understand ourselves, how can we, I mean, it's hard for us to understand others because just like the art of war, I'm dragging every single time. Okay? So knowing yourself and knowing your opponents, you will Hundreds of war, but by example, Buddha, not by example, knowing yourself and knowing your opponent, you will not lose entirely on every single engagement. Not win, not lose. That means you do not um, completely ruin the whole thing, right? Or you won't completely coming out uh, wrecking this relationship or this work. You will understand how, how uh, what the reality, the limits, and all that, and you will understand how to preserve it to the best of your abilities. Uh, in Chinese word, this means you do not lose entirely, right? We, they didn't ask you have to win over others. You know, win at the expense of others is also a form of losing. So it has to be win-win, or at least not, no one is losing out everything. So back to this, right? To reach that level, we need to start learning how to be patient. Patient with others, but also patient with ourselves. Ah, that's, that's something I learned as well. A lot of times we get agitated because we're impatient with ourselves. Or especially that thought in the mind that seeps in that makes you agitated and you act on that impulse and 
carry it forward to other people. So we need to bring back and ask ourselves something outside my control. I can't do it. Say, you know, my uh, boss or work environment is not that conducive to open communication. Everyone's very rigid, structured. So what can I do um, in this environment? What's my job? That's something I can control. I need to do my job and I do it to the best of my, my abilities. And I have delivered, even though it's too much, I delivered. So you need to be patient. Some th conditions outside always change. Your eyes is open, you always observe. But right now, what you need to do is you need to develop yourself, develop that resilience, the rhythm that keeps you going. Like in Chinese word, there's another saying, um, 天下独善其身. So if you have the condition, you do what is good for everyone, benefit the whole world. If you're in the right position and the right power or right uh, person to do that. If you have no condition to do that at all, you start by building up yourself. In Buddhism, it's called uh, If you can't even um, deliver yourself to the... Um, enlightenment how can you enlighten others or if you can't even help yourself over these hurdles how can you help others to overcome the hurdles you will drown with him as well because you can't even sweep so knowing that we need to help others knowing that benefiting others is benefiting ourselves that's understanding it but actually acting on it you need to start by knowing what you can take what you cannot take and how you build up i'm going a bit really deep in this i hope i didn't misinterpret this but um, it's always uh, important to have patience and patience comes with time and with yourself and others. And the second thing is to have long-term thinking. Long-term thinking helps you to be more patient because sometimes you just don't need to know why. Sometimes this thing really just doesn't matter. Sometimes it's just you take it, you let it go and you move on um, because you need your energy for something more important. Uh, become Buddha or practicing to be more patient or practicing to, to improve your capability you will not lose out in the end you might seem being taken advantage of or you might seem being uh, how to say uh, not able to express what you need to say uh, for the for work for a relationship or anything but uh, if you patient understand uh, or if you don't understand if you can't understand you build up your uh, time uh, you being you being patient with you let time do its job uh, you find your own support network if you need. If you're okay, support network can come in the form of sutra as well. You know, it doesn't have to be human, but it's best to have a human. Uh, if not, then you read the sutra. You can read it angrily, you can read it happily, you can read it sadly, you can repeat loudly. doesn't matter. Buddha understands. All right. Uh, in the end of the day, it's just frustration needs to be vent out properly, correctly, and then it will be gone. So just to uh, allow our... Um, uh, Maggie, uh, to catch up, we just talked about continuation of second reading of um, Mr. Yu who met the stove god. Uh, we just talked about how Mr. Yu was woke up from his deep slumber of his wrongdoing. And Mr. Uh, Zhang, which is the stove god, uh, gave him a prescription to clean up his thoughts, uh, to pack up his um, wandering thoughts, the thoughts of lust, the thoughts of greed, the thoughts of superficial thinking, the thoughts of etc etc all the wandering thoughts and we talk about how hard it is in reality to put it in action because uh, things happen to us from outside also inside sometimes it just have a lot of um, a lot of uh, subconscious thing coming up we call it the in uh, the, the karma we commit infinitely but inside and outside you know it comes up this wandering thought like a train that never stops so from there, we appreciate, even though we read the same word every time, we want to understand how um, how we approach, how we achieve this goal of really um, able to leave only the good thoughts behind, the positivity behind. And then, if we have these good thoughts, if you have the ability to do it, we need to do it without asking for anything in return, be it fame, be it wealth, be it prestige doesn't matter it's big or small doesn't matter it's hard or easy as long as we do it earnestly uh we're in our power if it's outside our power we still 
to do it, we still need to uh, be diligent in completing it through other people or something like that. So, and then Mr. Zhang has talked about being patient and being peaceful, have a long term thinking. Uh, being patient takes uh, understanding, not bottling up your frustration. Uh, and also, time allows uh, you to see things clearly. So, patience is important because it will stop you from doing anything you regret later. Uh, and still find a support network to help yourself to overcome your, your weakness like this, uh, this here, or um, reading the sutra, etc. And let time show itself. Sometimes things really doesn't matter in the long run. That's why you have the long-term thinking to help you. Like this is really not matter. I mean, this is temporarily. This arrangement might not to be your liking in work, in a relationship, in uh, any factors, any conditions you met, you know, in your life, any encounters in your life. Uh, sometimes it just really doesn't matter. You just gotta have to um, do your part, and that's it. All right, it's outside your power. Some uh, don't. Sometimes don't take things too seriously. Yeah, that's one thing I also add. To be patient, you also can't be too serious, right? You have to be earnest in your job, do your stuff, but if you're too serious about it, too caught up into it, you end up uh, being dragged down into that abyss. There's no need. You finish your stuff and you move on. You focus on something that actually is important. And I also emphasize the significance of understanding yourself first or knowing yourself first before you try to benefit others and all that. Uh, like out of all from Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. Zi ji zi bi bai zhan bu dai. So that's the summary. So once we know these elements, we um, need to keep... So we know the directions, we know what to do. Do not... And then do not be lazy. We need to put quantity into it, numbers into it. So you know, like the PT, like in gym example, they give you a plan according to your body weight, your fitness goal, you want to be more, in my case, want to be more uh, lean or you know, not too skinny. Some people want to cut down weight. So they give you a goal and then they measure how uh, you carry on your daily life, you eat or your exercise capability, your stamina. Now they give you everything. That's why that's the part of knowing yourself is, right? And then um, this plan is nice. Everything's perfect. But there's only one thing remaining, actually doing it. Actually doing it means it takes time, repetition. Again, 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 again. So <laughs> this is actually the part where everyone just uh, get very excited, motivated, and then they just slouch, slouch, slouch. Some can bounce back and go back to the normal routine, you know, rest and work, rest and work. Some, in my case, PT1 is just slouch and never come back. So, yeah, do not be lazy. So, sums up in one word. What does lazy mean, right? Uh, lazy means you rest at the right time, you work at the right time, all right? When you need to rest, you rest. You don't stay up, play game until midnight or watch YouTube. We talk about that. Uh, or when you work, you work, you, uh, you, 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 you find the, the time that you have promised yourself to work, you work on it. Work on your fitness or work on your, say, chanting Amitabha for cultivation or your own career stuff that, that you want to develop. So those are all important, part of the diligence. All right. So, and then don't lie to yourself. All right. So we have read this before, but right now we use a uh, experience in life after a few weeks to read it into it again. Don't lie to yourself, all right? Don't lie to yourself. Lying to yourself is the, is the problem of Mr. Yu and a lot of us, uh, myself as well sometimes. And um, Mr. Yu has the biggest problem is lying to himself. He thought he's good. He's a good man in, in, in every sense of the word, but he's not a good man in every sense of the word. Not because it's evil, big, big bad, doesn't need to be that. You just need your mind and thought and speech act not in accordance to the teachings or rather you're not really benefiting others. You're not sincere. Then it's already not good. So do not lie to yourself. Understand your progressions. Um, uh, only you know, to be honest. Um, we can listen to teachings for Master Qing Kong or any 
good masters that we respect, revere. Those are reminders uh, where we are. Um, and then keep at it for a long go, long term. Keep going at it, and the result will come itself. So, this is the prescription from Mr. Um, Zhang, uh, the self God to Mr. Yu and to us. Well, she's being sincere. Mr. Yu has been sincere in his prayers to Mr. Uh, to, to the self God. Hence, this is the reply. You have done a lot of unwholesome things or think of all unwholesome things. Your deeds are not genuine. You have no merits in your action or your merits are negligible in comparison to the punishments that it incurred, trespassings. Hence, right now, the fact that I'm still here telling you that what you need to do means that this is your last line of hope. Um, obviously, um, he disappeared after saying that. And then he, um, Mr. Yu has awakened now to this, you know, enlightenment does not take, doesn't need to, I mean, we, we like to have full enlightenment, but this is also a form of enlightenment. Xiao Wu, uh, Da Wu, Xiao Wu, Da Che Da Wu, uh, in Chinese, small enlightenment, big enlightenment, complete enlightenment. It's a stage, right? In this case, you need to have this small enlightenment. And then in the end of that, chapter you will understand he built up his small enlightenment into his big enlightenment. So this small enlightenment, he aware that his action is not right, his deed is not right, his thought is not right. So he has been uh, changing himself and make a very strong resolve. I really need to fix my life. Right now, I need to fix my conduct. So he, he this is what we call you need to You need to deliver yourself to the right path before you can help others across these seas of sufferings or seas of difficulties. You need to overcome this obstacle and then you can help others, coach others to overcome this. So he's starting doing it to himself. First, name, rename, rebrand, right? Like a marketing, I want to launch a new product, I rebrand myself to suit that new goal. So in this case, he remarked, rebrand himself as Mr. Yu of Pure Thoughts, Yu Jing Yi, mm. straightforward. And obviously, you want to go really deep about what is Jing, what is Yi. Ah, that, that's in Chinese it would be easier. But the whole point is, he wants to be a person with pure thoughts. He wants to cultivate pure thoughts. Um, and then he swear to. So how do he achieve pure thoughts? Get rid of all the wandering thoughts. Let it sink in. How do you have we get rid of our wandering thoughts? No. Okay. So how do we how do we do it? We have Amitabhas, right? We use them. So based on my experience so at, at, at the moment so far, Amitabha is still not strong in my mind. Right? I'm using my example. I hope it can be one of the lead to your own, in your own circumstance, your own level, in your own case. My situation is like the work is not working well. Things are not going well. I feel angry. I swear. I went up frustration to my dear colleagues. My colleagues are, I understand, I understand. And then I feel like everything was dragged down by my own negativity. And then I was like, I need to chant Amitofo. All right. And even I chant it, I still feel very negative. So I keep going and work and work and work. So it becomes a you know, numb to the outside uh, situation that does not go to my likings. But after, after the work, I got drawn, exhausted and everything. Um, my mind is still processing everything that happened on the day, you know. Um, the new boss is not uh, working in with us, uh, an absentee boss or stuff like that, you know, situation. The work environment is more suppressing rather than encouraging me to work better. It's a bit micromanaged. So this is the frustration I'm facing, the condition I'm facing. And hence my anger and all that. But um, if we, that takes me two days to process it and let it go a little bit. Now it's better. Why am I saying all these new baby stories? It's because this, these are daily lives, guys. These are the, li the things we face in work. And I'm pretty sure you guys have faced even worse or even more than I am. Uh, I'm being a new person in this line. So these wandering thoughts comes in from the outside, from the inside. You know, your, your wombing, your um, in, uh, karma from infinite life and the outside factors that I just mentioned. 
now we are now Mr. Yu wants to get rid of all this. Wants to wants to get rid of them. Amitabha Buddha helps, even though it might not be strong at the time. But after you settle down and you you use Amitabha for slowly sweep it away, it will still help. So so, so that's why there's a word patient from his teaching. You be patient. Let let time do its job. Don't rush. Be patient with yourself. You are not enlightened yet. All right. So just chant. Keep chanting. Even if you remember chanting. If you can't take it anymore, go and watch YouTube, enjoy, relax, have some tea, and then come back and chant. Okay? Know your own rhythm. Don't give up. Just don't give up. Long term, you will accumulate this. This is all in accordance to the prescription. In long term, if you keep doing more and more and more, you get the snowball rolling, you will get to the level where you're able to stop it with one Amitofo. That's the goal, isn't it? Name for Chen Pian. Uh, Kung Fu Chen Pian. Right? Uh, one mind undisturbed on Amitabha's name, no matter what happened outside. But how do you start? Here, here we are. We start here. Start now. When you're driving, like Maggie's driving now, she's like, Amitofo, Amitofo. Or, or Auntie, Auntie Yanzi, when she's editing all that uh, long, air, long yapping of Dylan. It's like, oh, so much, so much word from Dylan. Then she's like, Amitofo, Amitofo, Amitofo. Please cut down. Cut down the length, Dylan. Okay, I'll cut down the length now. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, so yes, going back, um, when he started, that's what I'm just saying. When he started, it's a lot of wandering thoughts flying around, right? Now, right now we have more concept now. Now, now it's more concrete for us. In the first reading or the first part of a reading, we just think like, oh, okay, it's just a description of what happened to Mister Yu. Now we bring it to our own, our own experience into it. All right. So when he started, it's a lot of wandering thoughts. And these wandering thoughts, the worst part is being doubtful and lazy. Uh, sometimes uh, you're being doubtful whether this teaching even works, right? Like I say, like Amitofo doesn't even help at the time when I need it uh, to, 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 or what? That is it? Or is it because I really do not have the concept, like psychologically, associate Amitabha with calmness and tranquility? Subconsciously, I'm not saying right now I know. Subconsciously, it becomes a habit. When I have Amitabha, I don't have anger. When I have anger, I don't have Amitabha. No. I still treat it as a concept, an abstract concept called Amitabha. Uh, it's not in my practical life, in my daily wiring of my brain. So that's why you need to practice every time you can or whatever the condition you can so that you can associate Amitabha with absence of anger. Or serenities. If you can practice to a level where Amitabha, over, one word of Amitabha alone can bounce off all that frustration or able to hold you together in face of uh, pressures from the outside, then you congratulations, you're on another level. So right now, going back, he's struggling. We are struggling. He's struggling as well. And he struggled with doubt. He's struggling with laziness. Uh, you know, I talk about this now, I'm all worked up, nice, I swear in front of kitchen god, stove god. But then, after two days later, he's on his usual routine again. Uh, in our case, back to game, back to YouTube. For me, even worse, after finish this, I go back go back to YouTube and game. So that's, that's how it is. So how do you pick yourself up, right? Like, instead of just grudging against yourself, maybe you can find a way, add more. Session. Oh God, what did I do to myself? Or uh, have a routine like this, you know. Even though it's just very few, not enough. Start from here, and then you can build up momentum. You can do more and more and more and more and more. Uh, that's why Master Ching Kong showing us example. He start eight hours a day, but did he actually start eight hours in the first first run? Maybe even more. Who knows? When when he's in under Mister Lee, Lee Lao Si. Uh, Mr. Bing Nang Di, uh, right? Uh, one of the prominent uh, lay Buddhist master in our Chinese Buddhist society. He has been training everyone. And Master Ching Kong is one of the few that are actually successful in Buddhism se section. Why? Because he trained and trained and trained and trained and trained. Everyone got the same treatment. He's not special out. He's not like one on one special. No. Everyone's the same. He's even like a site student in a sense. Like he came in late, he listened from the site. And then he practiced. 
he he but he's the only one who actually take the teaching to the heart and actually do it and and his condition is much more uh tough than us he works so hard on this so same for us um in our condition in our condition we need to work hard as well in in, in whatever we can to take this teaching into another level absorb in our life so now back to here he has made a vow to be pure in his mind things are not going well because he's still sinking back so he prayed to the Guan Yin Bodhisattva by you know prostrating until his forehead bleeds and he make a, make a deep vow may my pure thoughts be pure forever may my um, motivations to do good be uh, be high forever be uh, motivation be strong forever to do good and if I have any sense of slackishness or any sense of um, slack in my um, vow in my commitment to this then may I fall to hell so that's the strength of his resolve um, coupled up by all the sufferings and all the so sometimes having some frustration is good it push you forward it's like a momentum you know otherwise everything's well or people's good works good life's good why am I going why am I needing to go anywhere we have heard wording people who are content are always the happiest person they're talking about materials they're talking about you know this wealth and all that external stuff you only need you only have a stomach for three meals a day you don't need to eat four meals six meals or you only need this much nutrition for your life you don't need to eat more you only need a car to replace your feet you need to, i mean for you to transport I'm using chinese directly sorry and then but what cannot be content is your pursuit for spiritual enlightenment or pursue for knowledge and in our case it's pursue of enlightenment pursue of awakening pursue of linking the teason pursue of your awareness this must always be hunger you must always have hunger that drive to improve yourself non-stop this is how bodhisattva do it they vow like bodhisattva city garba i will not be buddha until everyone is the, the hell is devoid of any beings that means everyone was liberated that hunger to help others that's the most powerful thing he may live poorly appear as a poor person or anything but he will do everything in his power to help others that's the most powerful part of our existence people may die people may suffer they may have a short life like yen, yen hui the best student of confucius but he's the most happiest person than anyone in the next five thousand years would ever be besides the uh, enlightened masters so doesn't matter you're poor or rich yes it's hard or doesn't matter your position is high or low doesn't matter you get uh, co-eyed by others um, but if you have the strong vow strong you know drive uh, to pursue um, full liberation full enlightenment or really want to benefit everyone or really want to do the best of what you do in your life even though it's a simple thing then you are not wasting your time here so back to here he's doing the same i'm not gonna you know slack around and let myself sink any further i'm standing up now all right i will fall to either i'm going forward and be a pure minded person that means he's able to achieve the, the next step of enlightenment or i'll fall to hell that means i'll sink into my habit and allow the uh you know greed hatred ignorance you know to take over that's it there's no other way that's the devotion we need and hopefully it inspires us from here from here now on he has made that vow he has drawn that line either hell or pure land in his case hell or enlightenment every single word he has a very clear now in subconscious conscious subconscious every single word every single action every single thought every single time he asks himself I will not cross that line I will not fall back to that I have to go forward there's a saying in Chinese break all the ships burn all the ships behind and there's only forward ah, using the axe to chop all the ship behind like the military you that's the only way they can retreat burn all the ships behind 
you can only go forward towards the enemy, your habits. 要有一种迫气就是这样 You need to have that level. Otherwise, why would people call Buddha the great hero, 大英雄 The original use of Buddha, one of description of Buddha is the great hero. Because of this, he will burn. He will sacrifice his life in order to pursue enlightenment as well. Let alone this. So back to the ordinary level. Let's not go too far. Sorry, I get carried away.、Um, every word he say, every action he did, every thought he think, every time he is existing, as if someone's watching him, someone's monitoring him, auditing him, like he's in interview twenty four seven. It's tense. It's intense. But if you have a goal, it's fine. If you have no goal, then don't do that. It's anxiety. So, um, so just he, he's. It, it just means he's very aware. He's very careful, right? Earnestly careful, not trying to appear as good. He actually wants to be good, so he has to be careful. He's serious about this now. So every time he um, 一切有利于人，有利于物质 everything he can do. Every time he walk by someone who needs the. Wealth, uh, to be、uh, begs for money or、uh, anything he needs, uh, uh, any anything he has that can help others, um, anything he could do to help others, it doesn't matter big or small, you know, ten cents, ten million dollars, stuff like that, or busy or busy or free, you know, I'm free, I can do more. I'm busy, I can do less. I'm still doing it. Uh, doesn't matter people know or not, you know, my wife is watching me or my my friend is watching me, or no one's watching me, doesn't care, just do it. And doesn't matter your energy is there or not. Sometimes you're too tired for it. You still bring up something.、Um, he always do it with a heart of joy. He always do it with willingness, with joy. 委屈成就而后止 He、uh, bend himself down in order to get through the things. Sometimes maybe you know he need to compromise.、Um, be、uh, you know sometimes、uh, you want to say up.、Uh, Grab an example. You want to release captive animals. They charge you. They know your intention. They charge you triple the price they usually charge the normal people. So, one hundred dollars instead of say thirty、uh, dollars per kg. You buy it just to save them. Something like that. So, doesn't matter as long as you achieve this goal. So you crawl your way to it. If your leg is fail to walk, something like that. 爬都要爬到去那一边，你知道 ？So um and obviously he do it when the condition arise when he has encountered this conditions. 随缘方便 ，he use any expedite means to get this thing complete. He don't just ask or knock on the door and say, "Can I help you? Can I help you?" This would be wrong. It would be annoying and disturbing others. So he do it when this condition to do it. When he pass by someone who really need help, he can help. Then he help. Wang Zhi Jing Gong, so he planted a lot of、um, hidden kindness. Call it hidden kindness. That means he don't do it for the face; he do it from his heart.、Um, and back to his role as a father, husband, he and the teacher. Dun Lun, Qing Xue, Shou Qian, Ren Lu. So he do his role. As a as a as a whatever he is, you know, as I just mentioned, he learn earnestly, diligently, study. He's a teacher, by the way, and he's going to he's still going for exam, right? To get the Juren Imperial Examination, so he studies the Su Jing, the Confucius classic, all that. Be、um, humble, be patient, especially against humiliation. Ren Lu. Story about why the Indians, when they pass down the virtue of patience, Chinese translated the monk from India translated into Chinese as "be patient against humiliation." So specific, the original word word, "renai," is the origin of Buddha's teaching. They say just be patient, right? But when it comes to Chinese context, the Indian monk translated into、uh, well, call it Indian subcontinent. There was no India back then. It's just a culture name, so they say be patient against humiliation because Chinese people really have that sense of "si ke sa, bu ke ru," something like that. You know, you rather I rather die than being humiliated.、Uh, just a little side knowledge, right?、Um, I rather die than being humiliated. They look at their face or their honor higher than their life. Same applies to Japan as well, actually. 
the same Confucius line. But back to here is um, he has to be patient against any sort of humiliation, you not know, from sarcasm or anything, like or stuff like that. And he applies cause and effect in his life, not just to himself, also talk to others. What is cause? What is effect? Do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. And time dilation, you know, do good doesn't necessarily get good now. Depends on how well you are. Give give more complexity to it. You know, just because now you have bad, you do good, uh, and you encounter bad things doesn't mean that there's no good rewards or there's no good de- uh good rewards. It just means that your past bad deeds was being paid f- upfront, and then your good deeds will be rewarded later. Right, just like you have debt and salary, you can't just mix them up. Your debt is still a debt. 150k mortgage, you still have to pay for it. I'm talking about from a bank worker perspective. And then your salary still work every fortnightly. You can't just mix them up just because you got charged extra interest for paying late. Doesn't mean that your salary is not paid forward. You have to clear them up. This this kind of concept needs to be clarified. Even now nowadays, a lot of people mix them up. All right. Oh, so how are we supposed to be uh no, right? You have all the debt in with in, interest in your past life. You have to pay for it now. It's fair. That's why once we really drill this understanding into our mind, sometimes there's nothing to be frustrated. We're paying our debt. Um, sometimes it's also a way from heaven or from Buddha to teach you, or like to make you aware. You know? Like if everything goes well, you won't improve. Uh, if things doesn't go well, then it tested how well you are. Now I become frustrated, ran up, uh, grudge, uh, swear. There we go. My level is that much. This is my level. So now I know my level is not that high. So now I need to be humble. I need to work harder. That's the important part. We need to get out from it. Not get caught up in the test. It's to get the most from the test, even you fail and in order to pass next time. So, talking to myself as well, okay? So, hopefully it helps you as well. So, now we'll, we'll move on. Because um, I want to wrap up. I promise to wrap up. So, now we'll wrap up. Um, yep. You accumulate this and calculate every month. Uh, I personally do not calculate. I don't have the habit. I don't, I don't like to calculate. But this is good. It's like a progression report. You understand what happens every month to you. If you have the habit, go ahead. It's good. Personally, I would just observe every time. But this is good. You accumulate every month like Leo Fans, Mary and Fault. You have some calendar. You can just say how many good I did, how many bad I did every day. I, d- I don't do that. It's just, yeah. Nah. But um, this is good because he keeps him on tap because he's actually engaged in it. And then he report to the stove god, just like we report to our boss our daily production uh, quality and stuff like that, you know, daily report. Um, and as he goes on, he gets used to it. He gets the habit of helping without even thinking to help. It becomes his nature. So how the benzing zan so this is all just going back to your true nature, the, the, the pure nature of you existent. From all this overthinking, greed, hatred, ignorance, uh, arrogance, uh, doubt, this muddy mess, and then slowly transform into the polish away all the rough edges into someone who is actually good in the truest sense of the word. That's him. He did that. From 47 to 50, right? He has reached a level, like Maggie has told us two weeks ago, last session, is um, when he moves, his thought move, all right? He thought, think, when he think of something, it's always be in the, it's always good. That's the bottom line. It has to be good in the very least, if not pure, like in the absence of thoughts, the union. When he stops thinking, then he has no thoughts. So if he doesn't need to think, he, he has no thoughts. It's clean. If he think, it has to be good, kind, positive. And I'm pretty sure this means no matter what happens. Right? Not just when he's sitting there in front of a 
Buddha statue and he's like that. No, I, I'm pretty sure it means that where, wherever he do in his society of Wen Chang, in outside, in his own family, inside, wife, daughter, in his friends, in his boss, in his students, he's like that. Doesn't matter their reaction to them. Doesn't matter what he sees. He can do that. This is it. This is quite equivalent to Kung Fu Chen Pian in a sense, right? Because when you think, you think of Amitofo, 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 nothing else. So his case, the Amitofo equivalence to force one shan, infinite. One is not just a number, it's, it means infinite good good thoughts, right? Infinite light. The Amitabha means this. Using Amitabha, if if you say Amitabha from the from the from the from the from the base, it's wisdom, right? It's infinite life. If you use it, it's thousands of kindness. To burn her yung. So same thing, same thing, it's one thing. So he has reached that level. And then he, he, he also reached a level of not thinking anything, not allowing any wandering thought to come up when he does not need to think. So, three years. So he can go to Pure Land anytime if he wow to bond there. Uh, how do we reach that? As I mentioned, from a muddy mess of an existence I am to a level of Mr. Yu. takes um, the process of understanding yourself. So we just summarize right now because the rest is just the actual good thing that happened to him, right? The, the results. Now we want to see the process because we're in the process. And now we are in the level where Mr. Yu aware of his faults. Maybe not fully, maybe fully. Who knows? There are even more coming up. Just pray to the Buddha, show it more. Because human, like anyone else, like it's hard to see in yourself clearly. It's really hard to have a critical self-examination. It takes a lot of courage to look into your eyes, your own eyes, and say, are you a good person? Have you done what you did? Have you do your job? Have you do the best? Have you, are you the best version of yourself? Or rather, are you honest with yourself? More often we say, hey, I am, I am. But when things come up, it's like, oh, yeah, no. Be honest. Uh, so now back to this. He's zizhi for... 47 of his life, right? We're lucky. We're not there yet. Or maybe we are, but we're not. But we're, not, we're aware of the Buddha's teaching. That's the point, all right? The whole point of Buddha's teaching is none other than stop lying to yourself, guys. This is the reality. This is how we can achieve the true happiness instead of false happiness or happiness that doesn't last. I'm not saying it's not happy, but it does not last, all right? Um, the true happiness is the happiness that lasts, that actually is liberating. So, from that mess, he built into aware of the mess that he is in, of, of his weakness, being honest with himself. And then from there, he start to reform himself. So it sounds similar to Leo Fan. It is Leo Fan in a compressed format. All right. So how did he reform himself? He used his own example. He started, so he was prescribed with whatever thoughts you have, set it aside, focus only on good thoughts. That's it. Like, no matter how hard it is, pull yourself back. What do I want to do? What is the right thing to do, given the circumstance now? I am given the salary. I'm given the job. I'm using my case again. Sorry. It's, my mind is quite... My world is quite small. I still need to enlarge it. Please bear with me. Um, my, um, uh, I'm given a salary. I'm given a duty for this. So my job is to finish this job properly, no matter how t difficult or how unfavorable the current environment is. All right. If I have anything to say, if they can listen, I say it. If they don't listen, I hint. If they don't want to listen at all, it's none of my business. It's their, it's their issues. I might not be right as well because I'm also lack of knowledge. Stuff like that, you know? Since we think a lot, direct it in the right way. All right? Directly in the way that's constructive. So I don't want to overthink and become frustrated and let it become worse or even become hate. I redirect it into my current role. What am I doing? What should I be doing? And how do I do my job to the best to, in my ability? And then when it's off work, leave it behind, focus on something that matters. So patience, long-term thinking, patience, long-term thinking. 
the three stuff, the process, after awareness of your weakness, you need to have self-examination, all right? And number one is, the goal is to clean up all the rubbish put in the box. And then now you have to leave the space for anything that is constructive, positive. All right? Positive does not mean everything is happy-go-lucky. No, it's not sunshine. Positive means it's terrible. It's crap. But I'm honest about this. I'm crap at this, but I'm going to work my way out of this. That's the positivity. All right? Not just simply... Um, oh, you'll be fine. Die your boo, and nothing's nothing's wrong. No, that's denial. That's self deceit. Going back to step one. No, the positive is. I can't do this now. I need help, or I'm too worked up on my frustration. I need help. Something like that. Be honest with yourself. Now I need to make this work for me, work for my life. So I need to be honest. What I need to work on. If I still can't accept it for now because I still have a lot to process, I'll give myself time. I'll go out and drink coffee and eat some tiramisu and then come back and look at it. All right? Give yourself time. Be patient. That's why there's a patience and long term behind. I'm going this in the long run. So this is what where we are now, or at least why I, why I understand where I am now. Um, hopefully, it can be a reference to you. If you're, you might be already well ahead of me. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah. So, so for, in my case, as far as, as I know, right now I just need to have patience with myself and patience with others. Things are not as bad as it seems. Or in the good, if things are favorable, things might not be as good as it seems. Just keep balanced. Understand. Uh, it sounds like a rap, isn't it? But in the, it's an actual Chinese word. Uh, in the I Ching, I think a lot of people in the West also have my heard of it. It's about how the world works, you know, how, how things change around so quickly, blessing in disguise, all that. I'm excited when I talk about this. This is very useful in our life. Everything that comes that seems unfavorable has blessings in there. So that, 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 that's an opportunity for it to change. Anything that comes in a nice wrap package might have hidden dangers in there. Might be complacency, might be, you know, giving you that condition for you to loosen out or become reckless, become arrogant. So be careful. The whole point is yourself. Are you able to see it clearly? Or you indulge either into frustration or into complacency? Back to the point is, this is our progress. And it does not leave patience and long-term thinking. If I'm playing a long game, I want to rest properly. I want to sleep properly. And then wake up faced with this problem in its own term i want to be able to able to overcome this problem and i can't overcome one day i'll overcome it 100 days eventually time will tell you this does not matter amitofo matters what is amitofo right in finite life in finite wisdom what is in finite life what is in finite wisdom right you can say in the most literary term in finite life i have a long life what does it what's the use of having a long life if you're not happy Right? That's why I have infinite light, infinite wisdom. Every single scenario, every single good, bad, or in a more on the ground term, crap, what awesome stuff, you can see light into it. You can see way out of it. That's the, that's the freedom, guys. That's the freedom. Even your life is being threatened in terms of maybe in MH730, not making light of the victims. I'm saying that if you're in the plane that are falling down, if you're in the earthquake right in the middle of a tsunami in Japan, or stuff like that, or if you're in this COVID lockdown in Shanghai, stuff like that, if threaten your life with hunger or any disease, you still can see a light out of it. In our case, Amitofo, bring me away. Bye-bye. Something like that. Yeah. That's the thing we need to bring home able to turn around in your mind mentally first because the world evolves around your heart your um, mental mental um, uh, the world changes according to your heart it's quite I don't know how to explain it please allow me uh, another few decades to get real, get understanding of it so um, right now I'm just saying that uh, the first battle is in the mind and then in the real life Right. So now he has gone through all that. 
right? Mr. Yu has gone through that journey. He has discovered himself. He also has made a resolve. On that basis, he starts making vows. His vow is real. It's not like me just saying I want to. It's real because he actually has that yearning to actually change his life for better. He really yearns like you yearn for food when you haven't been eating or you've been yearning for a nice cold iced tea after you've been running for two hours. That kind of yearning, guys. Or no, you're yearning for air uh, after being trapped in a commute for one hour in the morning, 8 p.m. God, so many people. Sorry, I get distracted. That yearning, all right? That yearning. So he made that strong vow and he made it. And the result is this. So that's the answer to, uh, to it, Maggie, is how did he do that? He yearns for it. He yearns for kindness, for good deeds. Like a lot of times we jump too fast in Buddhism, especially. They say, do not have attachments, do not have, uh, uh, you know, empty out all these desires and everything. It's right. You should. But can you? Uh, can we actually do that off, off the bat? No, right? The plane needs 20 kilometers or I don't know how many kilometers before it can take off, right? So where did all this came from? He also, the, yearn, the plane yearns to fly. That means for us, we yearn to, f to be liberated. But he needs that first 20 kilometers to go up. So what is our 20 kilometers? This, I'm yearning seriously to be out from my negativity or from my um, mind mental handicap or well, that's mental trap, like, you know, all that wang xiang, all that overthinking, all that negative stuff. So how do I do that? Start from building it constructively. If I want to think, think constructively. If I want to be angry, be angry constructively. How? Use the anger as an energy to change. Even you can't change others, you can change yourself. It will affect someone else in your life, trust me. So back to the point, that first 20 kilometers before the plane takes off, comes with fear. All this. Become part of your being. Every single day you ask yourself, what do you want? What do you want? I want this. I want this. If you have that. In our pure land, Amitofo. Amitofo. That's the meaning of it. Pure land. Pure land. Pure land. And then you can even think about how pretty that seven jewel um, seven jewel pond is. And then when you're in this cold winter in Sydney or summer in US, in the Northern Hemisphere, you can think about how cool or how warm that water is, even though your heater might not working. You need to be that uh, that desperate. Or like, sometimes the master even say that, because about me to go over time on this, I think this, I'm very excited. Like a man think about a beautiful woman every day. Instead of thinking about that thing, you think about this is how much you need to yearn for pure land or your success, your career or something like that. How much? Like a man think about a beautiful woman every day. Like yin ren si mei nu. Because we all think about that or most people think about that. So might as well use this as an example. Nothing is, nothing is negative if you can use it for good purpose. The thing is you need to overcome the frustration of not reaching there in the first run. Same thing. My piano as well. Holy moly, it's so tough. Jesus, I don't know how they do that thing. So what? I start learning. The simple one, twinkle, twinkle, little stars, and then build up on that. So, first 20 kilometers is the hardest, guys. All these gears, drag, I'm talking about science terms, things that go against you. All that, all that hard push, you need to be careful, don't run sideways. You need to follow that lane directly. You can't just go to the path of the grass, otherwise you got too much drag, you can't fly. You need to be on the path. That path is what? The path is set by this book, sages, not this book only, sages, right? But only one path. All paths are good, right? All paths in the aeroplane is good. But you need to choose one path. You can't be like, oh, suddenly I like this path and then you turn round and about and go to the other way. One path. Choose one correct path. Stick to it. Yearn for it. If you don't understand what yearn for it is, that means you didn't yearn for it enough. So that's why we have this session here.
That's why I'm having this speech here. Ask myself, do I really yearn for pure land? Or before that level, do I really yearn for success in overcoming my frustration in my life? If the answer is a strong yes, then even I close up this uh, team, I will still do it no matter what. If not, then that means I'm not there yet. That means I need to build up, which is the reality. Okay? 有, 有进, 有动, huh? 不要担心. So, need to have that drive, guys. Push. So, three years. That's how long it takes him. Three years. Some people take 20 years. That's a difference in how much they want this happening. That's a difference. How much he wants this, how much the others want this. The other one takes 10 and then another 10, about quite a bit of time because he doesn't have that condition that push him. He has a lot of worse thing going on. He really wants to get out of that, right? Like in a, in a burning house, you want to get out of that. The Elfan doesn't have a burning house yet. He has quite a stable life and everyone's quite good on him. That's why he's like, I'll take my time. That's fine. Nothing is wrong. Just just get out. The point is you have to get out eventually. Don't wait for next life. Now, the rest of this chapter is about what's the good results he have done after the hard work he put in for three years. I'm just going very quick on this. It's not really um, something we need to drag another session about because next week we need, we will talk about Tai Shang Ka Pian. Talk about actual cause and effect now guys. That means a lot of work on my end as well. I need to start understanding because this is a case heavy book rather than teaching heavy book. That means theory is there but a lot of them is based on what is right, what is wrong, like 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 case by case. They give you a lot of case. And then we need to talk about the case Literally, and then we need to talk about the context of the case. Alright. I mean, using Chinese, I'll translate. Li so back to Chinese English. This next book we're talking about is strongly, heavily on cause and effect, especially the case of cause and effect, rather than the principles, because principles is direct, straightforward. We can just bring out good deeds, yips, good reward, bad deeds, yips, bad rewards. All right, or the we'll talk about it next week. So back to this. This is shi as well. This is the case. Uh, the 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 case to reveal the principle of Mr. Yu's teaching. After all the hard work of three years, at the age of 50, he has managed to caught the attention of the head of the principle in one of the capital, in one of the, Ming Chao. Yeah, Ming Chao has two imperial universities. In one of the imperial universities in Ming Dynasty, right, Shou Fu, head examiner, something like that, principle. So this principle also goes by name Mr. Zhang. So he has very, two very important Mr. Zhang in his life. So this second Mr. Zhang, human Mr. Zhang, has um, invited him to be his teacher, of his, uh, to be a teacher for his son. He, so whole family got career advancement in a sense. He's, he got career advancement, he got invited to capital, so he moved to capital. Uh, or in Chinese word, Bei Piao. Uh, I'm not sure Maggie is correct. Uh, Bei Piao. Um, so back to the Chinese, uh, it means everyone moved to capital. Um, so he, yeah, 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 and and this employee of him, Mr. Zhang, has uh, deep respect to his character. He because he always do good deeds. It's obviously he exudes an aura of warm kindness. He doesn't feel intimidating. Uh, something also I need to reflect on myself as well. <laughs> that means that you're not compassionate enough. That means I always get angry easily. That's true. Thank you, Mr. Yu. Now, after two years moving to the capital, he has also taken an exam. All right, he exam, he got exam. And he got it, finally, from 18 years old to now, 53. Doesn't matter how late it is, he got it. That's his result. Um, and following that, so 50. Two, he got into the first level. 53, he got to another level. So from bachelor to master. 
So at the age of 53, that's the highest he get, master, jing shi. That means he got salary from the government. They don't need you to work as long as you achieve yourself um, well, you, you achieve excellence, they will provide you salary in the form of rice, rice back. You can sell it to buy farms and then basically he's set. He's financially set. Now, what's left in his life, right? We thought of his son. His son, five son for dying, for death, fortunately, stillborn or young age. Four daughter or three daughter, four daughter, three died as well, a child born, a stillborn also at the young age. So only one daughter left, one son left. And we remember his son has missed, gone missing early on. So one day he was in the capital, everyone, every important person are there, close to emperor and all that. So one of them is the eunuch, and we understand eunuch serves the emperors in, in the palace. Hence, they don't have the ability to reproduce. So, um, Mr. Yang is one of the eunuchs that has retired properly. And he has five sons that he adopted across China. Then, in one day, he just invited Mr. Yu to, you know, have a chat over a tea. Mr. Yang has ordered five of his sons to give courtesy, courtesy to Mr. Yu. And we'll move this forward. One of the sons, is 16 years old, adopted son, 16 year, years old. And he has been uh, uh, very familiar. He's, he exudes this familiar sensation to Mr. Yu. Mr. Yu has asked Mr. Yang, how did you came across these children, this child especially? And this Mr. Yang said, this kid has went into a wrong cargo ship when he was young, when he's playing around. So this ship, obviously, I think goes to capital, hence he's able to adopt. Uh, logically, I don't know, they didn't mention. It just say that this um, kid went to the wrong ship and I pick him up and adopt him as my son. So it's not too bad, in a good hand. Um, and Mr. Yu say that just, that's like 16 years ago, exactly how long ago it happened when he lost his son. So he asked this young uh, 16 years old kid, can you please take off your left uh, socks so that I can see so, uh, I'm looking for something underneath your feet at the left side. And then he looked at the left feet palm and saw two birthmarks, exactly the same birthmark that his missing son has. Obviously, he yelled out with all the emotions in him that you can imagine after finding your own son for 16 years. It's my son! And then Mr. Young immediately allowed him to go back with Mr. Yu. So in, in the end, not too bad, you know. Uh, this young son has uh, of this young Mr. Yu Jr. has met someone good, so he followed his actual father back home, and the father has the Mr. Yu has informed the wife, and the wife has um, basically overexcited and cry and hug the son they have been yearning to find back for sixteen years, and the reason why she's blind, part of the re reason why, and she found it. And suddenly her blood turns into tears. From te uh, her, her tears turn into a blood uh, color. And the sun just stick the, uh, the wound, in a sense, of the, uh, his uh, mother's tear duct. Uh, just like a baby goat licking a mother goat face. So um, suddenly her mother has revealed, her sight has returned. So it's like a Happy, happy ever after, but in the real life, um, this does happen. And Mr. Yu, obviously, sadness and happiness mixed together, you know. All these years gone, but finally a reunion. Hence, he got what he want, let go of his position or his prospect to be a government official and go back to his hometown. Um, and his employer understood and uh, blesses them with also a lot of gifts uh, that helped him along the way. So now, when he went back to his hometown, he don't sit there and enjoy his life. He do a lot of good deeds, continue, because it's part of his routine, like brushing and sleeping. And his son also has married afterwards. So every single good thing happened to him 
afterwards. Um, he has seven grandchildren, so Mr. Yu's lineage do not have fear of being broken. Uh, now he um, wrote the book at the best time of his life. All right, this book was written at this time when everything is going well. So he has a very complete story, um, balanced way as well. And he wrote this book all as his encounter with the stove god and continued to change his life and used that as an example to teach his children. Indirectly, he also taught us. Uh, so he has lived a high age of 88 years old. So very long life, extended by his good fortune started, right? And then he started to have turned around at 50. So he's enjoyed 38 years of good life uh, since then. Everyone uh, thinks that he has done good deeds, hence the heaven praises him. So he has been a good example to the society as well. So that's it. Um, thank you very much for the um, second reading with me. Um, I'm aware we only have uh, we have over time for 20 minutes. I hope this has been helpful. Apologies for my um, off track uh, for some part of it. And I think I just need to emphasize some part, like you need to yearn to change. Just like Leo Fan said, you need to really yearn for it before you can get it. Otherwise, I haven't finished my word actually. Desires, if you have desire for good, that is a good thing. That's the first step. Called San Fagu, right? Just I, I finished. I, I got off track by the aeroplane, by the way. So the whole twenty kilometers is San Fagu. You really want to fly, so you need to build up that momentum to fly, and that momentum requires you to have that desire to reach that. So once you achieve that level of um, momentum, where you can live your life without giving in to the habits, then it's time. What Master Shikong will say, do not be attached to the good or the bad. As in, you do not need to think about you already doing it. Uh, like you're drinking water, natural. But now we are on the ground, we can't go anywhere, stuck in all this mud right, of life and a lot of conditions pushing forwards against us. Our job is to direct our thought somewhere else, positive, constructive, right? not letting it sink us in. Once we carry off either end of this life going to pure land, or you can do it like Mr. Yu before going to pure land in this life, you know, right? You already know your mind will not give rise to any wandering thoughts by then. Or just Abitofo. Then you don't even need to specially calculate one by one in the calendar. Those are like young kids studying mathematics, 10 minus 3. I use the finger 10 minus 3 equals to 7. I still use that, but what I'm saying is you already have reached a level of proficiency, you don't need that. Right. So for us, we are still young kids trying to walk, so stay on the path. Don't be um, impatient with the repetitions. These repetitions are important. Advise and then use it in the big white world out there. Well, big white messy world out there. It's a huge world, it's a big world, it's a lot of mess as well as we understand but also a lot of good coming out of the mess so yeah have this in your heart and face the world and let that this condition hits you to show who you really are sometimes it's not who you want to be but your reaction might force you into that position or you might not be able to control yourself that's fine that means that you 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 are human and you need to work on it and you need to give yourself time to work on it uh, don't be uh, you can be sad you can be defeated felt a sense of defeat but you need to pick yourself back up in the way you can and find a way out of it so that's the message you want to bring back it's okay to fail it's okay to have issues but it's not okay to lie to yourself about it uh, it's it's it just need to face it and then solution will appear if not ask we can't finish this in one hour and a half and there's a reason why in buddhism we have a saying a buddha say that no matter how long i say it it cannot finish i felt a little bit of what he felt you know 
Like he could not finish anything, even though every the time is like every single grain in the river Ganges. It's just never ending. Once you go to Pure Land, you understand. When you sit on that, that Jiang Tang, oh, this is what I heard from Master Teaching. When you sit in that Amitabha's Pure Lands uh, teaching hall, you just sit for many kalpas <laughs> in finite life, isn't it? That's the whole point. Um, no, but depend how well, how much you yearn. If you really want to quick enlightenment, you might just sit and go, and then you become Buddha. Some people takes many eons to become Buddha. Doesn't matter. Point is, um, uh, we we'll talk about this uh, repetitively. It may be repetitive. It may be dragging on, but um, repetition helps us uh, to get better. And every time I repeat, I also have different perspective. Uh, I will do my best to concise it. Not like today, um, I, I get carried away, sorry. Um, but yeah. Uh, so we would like to end it, uh, end it here for the Mr. Yu who met the Kitchen God. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, let's end this with a prop, uh, 10 times Amito for chanting and the dedication of merits. Amito for Amito for a mi to fo 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 merit May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, and repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss.